Uh, hello, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I had a patient on the phone, so a bit of a delay. Um, so I'll now begin. Um, before we begin, um, we, all participants have been put in mute for a better experience. This webinar has been recorded. As I say, I'm sorry for the delay. I had to speak to a patient quickly. Please use the question panel on the right to ask any questions as we go along. Handouts are available um, on the panel on the right. A webinar feedback survey will be supplied at the end of the webinar and follow up. Can you please complete this, especially should you need a certificate for any local continuing professional development requirements? Please register for future webinars. I'll try not to answer the phone right before it to patients. And these can be found at blatchford.co.uk backslash webinars. And any questions, please feel free to contact me on john.ross at blatchford.co.uk. Today, I'll be talking about the Cellcare Breathe range of products on this webinar. My name is John Ross. I am a prosthetist of over 27 years. Uh, I'm still a practicing clinician uh, and I work for Blatchford um, around the world. I have a keen interest in sockets and what happens inside the sockets. So actually this is of interest to me as well, this seminar. So the agenda list for today, um, we'll begin with the introduction. Um, I explain the reason why we did this work to start off with. The background and then the Silk Air Breathe cushion and locking liners, finalising some clinical evidence and a summary. First of all, in many countries over the years, we have run multiple questionnaires asking what outcome the amputees want from their prosthesis, be it their needs, uh, the activities of daily living that they're going to get into, do they live in a monsoon area, do they live in the middle of a desert, the components available, um, both those that um, are reimbursed in their countries or those that are available around the world. The alignment is possible taking into account any flexion, extension, avid adduction, and the biomechanical effect that these will have on that outcome. And it doesn't matter where we do this, we always get the same three answers. Comfort is always top. All amputees want comfort. Stability, and uh, no one wants to fall over and then efficiency. It's got to be said that the most expensive advanced componentry is of very limited use without a comfortable socket. Contemporary liner technology uh, is comprised of viscoelastic gels, um, silicons, urethane and thermoplastic elastomers. Uh, these are all used to improve socket comfort. Um, however, all function as insulators. Each material varies in its ability to dissipate heat, with each layer adding a further level of heat retention, which can reduce comfort and potentially lead to residual limb breakdown. The limitations of today's line of technology prevents amputees from being able to manage heat and the resultant buildup of sweat can lead to the following undesired consequences. The expense of more energy to walk through movement, compromise ability due to, to cool due to reduced body surface area, and the reduced surface area actually further being covered by this thermal insulating material. And as we will see, sweat is a major issue for amputees. Sweat acts as a lubricant this increases relative movement between the line on the skin, causing chafing. Movement can also cause an increased energy expenditure due to compensation for poor control, such as piston that may be caused or rotational abnormalities in the socket. Because of the amputation, it should also be noted there's less surface area available to cool. Don't forget the areas lost on top of the amputation due to the suspension sleeve or liner itself. Inside the socket and liner becomes a moist warm environment, an ideal breeding ground for pathogens and again more details of this will be covered later on. The 
body, as we know, cools by moving blood towards the surface of the skin. If this is insufficient, we start to sweat. Need to regulate temperature is greater for amputees as they use more energy compensating for lack of movement of the ankle. Sweating an elevated skin temperature reduces the perception of socket comfort and can lead to residual limb breakdown. Both have been cited as reducing the quality of life for our amputees with amputees and reducing the satisfaction of the care that we give them. And then move on to why we're here. The Silkair Breathe Range started as part of a UK military grant. This funding had been given to remove the sweat from the residual limb socket interface from troops serving in hot and humid environments. UK and USA military have tried a series of treatments to prevent this, but none have been successful in preventing sweat for military personnel. So therefore, it was deemed time to try removing the sweat from against the residual limb and keeping it away from the amputee because um, we could not prevent the sweating. This resulting program allowed us to develop a perforated silicon liner that tra transmits moisture and air for cooler, drier skin and a more secure socket fit, while maintaining the positive comfort and suspension benefits of a prosthetic liner. From this, we developed a system of shaped laser drill perforations along the length and at the distal end of the liner to effectively draw moisture away from the residuum and keep the limb dry. <clears throat> this was driven by the aim to improve skin health, reduce the relative movement between the limb and the liner, enhance the proprioception and control by improving the coupling between the prosthetic limb and the patient's own limb, enhancing the comfort and maintaining a drier, cooler skin for the amputee. And doing this, In doing this, we research the optimal size and shape of these perforations. We use a Pico laser to laser drill these and maintain accurate control of their size and shape. These perforations distributed along the length and distal end of the liner allowed us to remove any moisture or air trapped against the skin and move it away from the skin. We also found that these perforations allowed us to generate a vacuum between the residuum and the liner. Um, while transmitting the sweat away from the skin, and this gave us a better coupling between the prosthesis and the patient's limb themselves. This vacuum that was generated via the holes distorted. This vacuum is generated via the holes. These holes distort during loading, and the resilience of the silicon makes them return to their normal shape when weight is relieved. And you should remember that during stance phase, the liners will be loaded to about one and a quarter times body weight. So while loading, the holes distort and allow sweat and air to move away from the skin to the outside of the liner. And then when offloading, the resilience of the silicon close these holes, these perforations again, sealing the system. Additionally, our liners are coated by tenderness. Tenderness is coating on the inner silicon surface, reduces shear stresses in the skin, allowing easier dawn and doffing and improving comfort. The Silk Air Breathe range of cushion liners is available as both a cushion and a locking liner option and is designed to keep the skin cool and comfortable all day long. The liners are intended for transtibial amputees. The cushion liner can be used for any amputee from K1 to K4 and the locking liner for K3 and K4 amputees. They have a six-month warranty um, and when ordering you 
change the suffix from CP for cushion to LP for a locking liner. I will start um, by talking about the Selkirk Breed liner. Each liner will be broken down into a product overview and then the fitting recommendations. The Selkirk Breed cushion was the first one developed. Also suitable for passive and elevated vacuum sockets, helping the user stay comfortable and cooler throughout the course of the day. The Silk Air Breathe Cushion Liner is a perforated silicon liner that exposes moisture and air for a cooler, drier skin and a more secure socket fit. It is recommended for use with both passive suction and elevated vacuum sockets. We use a seamless fabric cover with bidirectional stretch to ease donning. However, use of a suspension sleeve and expulsion valve will be required to allow the, the movement of the moisture and air from the skin to the outside of the liner. This technique and the findings of our research was first presented at the outcut, um, first presented at the ISPO World Conference in India. This illustration details how the outer suspension sleeve seals onto the thigh proximally and onto the outer socket distal. The liner is perforated to allow sweat and air to move away from the skin through the perforations and then along the fabric outer surface and ultimately through the one-way valve. It should be noted this can be used as well with elevated vacuum. From my experience, it is usually alarming at first to see the outside of the liner become damp for many amputees, but daily cleaning and the improvement of the residual limb health usually quickly outweighs this. On this slide, the video on the right shows how the perforations are applied to the outside of the, la the liner via laser drilling. These perforations in the cushion liner are dissipated along the length and distal end of the liner. As mentioned before, we use a pico laser, which creates small holes where we can accurately control the size and shape and design. These perforations generate a vacuum, plus allow us to transmit sweat and vacuum. The patented technology of the cell care breed liner works by letting air and perspiration normally travel between the liner and skin escape and evaporate through specially shaped holes. This helps to reduce the damaging effects of friction on damp skin that are often found with standard prosthetic liners and helps improve comfort. The motion of the person walking and pressing on the liner with their limb also expels air through the holes. With the use of a one-way valve, it helps to also generate a better vacuum and more secure fit. Okay, so as we can see in this video, as a pool, the uh, sweat, etc., or air is trapped at the end of the socket, as a way is applied, this is forced out away from the skin through the liner into the space between the liner and socket, and then eventually out through the one way valve. Okay. So initially, any sweat is built up or trapped inside the socket, and then the air will be pushed out. At this point, we create the vacuum against the liner and the residual limb, and this actually helps maintain the socket in the right position. Moving on to the fitting recommendations. For the Silk Air Breathe range of liners, you need to measure the skin from four centimeters up from the distal end. Then you select the liner that corresponds to this. If a patient is between two liner sizes, I would always recommend going to the next size down. For casting, I use a total surface bearing casting technique to capture the resin, residual limb volume and shape. And I will show you some photographs of this later on. Then we, in rectification, we use a volume reduction. 
Typically, I look for three to five percent proximal reduction, depending on the soft tissue coverage and a bone in the anatomy. And then this re reduction reduces to zero to one percent distally. So in casting, don the liner, cover the liner with cling film and apply a damp sock. Markup is appropriate um, landmarks. So typically bony landmarks, cut end of tibia, the fibula head uh, and the patella so that we know the trim lines and then any other sensitive areas. I then take circumferential measurements using the mid patella tendon bar or a bony surface as a landmark initially. I routinely take the measurements every two centimetres from this. Uh, and it's to these measurements that I will apply my reductions during rectification. And during the cast, I apply an anterior plaster slab to capture the bony anatomy. This is smoothed in to capture the anterior definition. And you need to keep working this into the anterior shape until dry. Once the anterior slab is dry, proceed with the circumferential wrap using a figure of eight um, and then just leave this to dry. I know that some clinicians at this point like to pinch along the posterior of the cast. However, I find this is unnecessary and all it does is save you from having to reduce somewhere between three and four millimetres when you do your reduction. Mark your alignment lines, flexion, extension. Ab or adduction or rotation of the knee is required before removing the cast. Once the cast has been removed, apply those reductions of 3 to 5 percent proximally and then 0 to 1 percent distally. Liner hygiene is of key importance to this technique, uh, to these type of liners. It's most important that the patient cleans the liner repeatedly. The patient should be instructed on proper maintenance and should wash the liner daily so the fabric is given sufficient time to dry between uses. The simplest way to launder the liner is to wash with simple soap. Nothing concentrated like detergent or dishwasher soap is required. Fill the liner with soapy water and squeeze through the perforation. The liner should be rinsed well and left out to dry with fabric side out. A solution of alcohol can also be used for cleaning as required, but this is not required daily. Moving on to the Cell Care Breathe Locking Liner. I will cover this in slightly more detail because I know that I've already covered the Cell Care Breathe Cushion Liner in an earlier session on elevated vacuum. So I will give slightly more detail on this one. The Silk Air Breathe locking liner incorporates a locking system with a unique one-way valve. It still allows the moisture management and air management through this. We use an integral matrix with unidirectional and bidirectional control, which I will also come back to later. And we still keep the tenderness coating to ease down and doffing for the patient. Why use the locking liner? Um, there are still some patients out there who do not like um, suction sockets, whether it be passive or elevated vacuum. Um, and many parts of the world, many patients still believe that the pin lock system is the most advanced system. The other advantage of the locking system is that you, you get the suspension without the bulk and restriction around the knee. You don't have the fragility of a suspension sleeve, and many amputees, as I say, find this easier. The advantage of our Silk Air Breathe locking liner, it still eliminates moisture and trapped air via the one-way valve we have distally, which maintains suspension, dry skin, and enhanced proprioception. The integrated matrix has no longitudinal stretch at the end. Okay. And this area has no perforations drilled into it. Okay, this resists pistoning of the prosthesis. Proximally, the bidirectional stretch allows comfortable knee flexion so the patient can sit down comfortably. 
Um, well, the continuing knitting technology of the fabric outer allows easier donning due to the smooth transition. If we were to perforate all the way down the walls, the line will simply slowly creep off as air would enter through these perforations at some point. Going back to the first principle, standard liners maintain their fit and suspension by fitting closely to the skin, maintaining an airtight seal between the liner and the skin. The locking breathe vacuum is maintained over the blue area, the area of unidirectional control. Okay. So here we have the matrix controlling the pistoning, and this is distal to the wall of perforations. This allows the use of a pin lock. The unique one-way valve on the distal end maintains the vacuum, the vacuum distally, providing suspension. Here we have a video showing how weight is applied to the liner and socket. Any fluid is expelled distally, passing through the valve, which opens during stance. Approximately, the wall preparations allow air and moisture to escape, and the fabric typically gets damp as a result of this. But what we can see is that there's an area between the perforations in the wall and this length, and this is where the vacuum is created, which maintains the socket and holds it on in place. Patient selection criteria for this liner is for transtibial. The silicon liner we use here, the geometers was specifically aimed at activity level K3 and K4 users. It looks for good soft tissue coverage. Um, and it's important the patient has good cognitive ability and remembers the hygiene that is important with this liner because they have to constantly clean the liner. I recommend a daily cleaning with soapy water and then using an alcohol-based wipe for once a week to make sure they clean it properly. Contraindications would be short residuums. The unidirectional fabric must end distal to the patella tendon, otherwise stretch will be concentrated in the perforations over the patella, leading to premature failure or restricted movement. Deep invaginated scarring distally is also a contraindication. This acts as a track for air running longitudinally down the residual and can actually prevent the vacuum from forming over the distal area. And the patient will typically feel this. Distal hypersensitivity to traction and the inability to tolerate pull of the pin during swing phase may be improved by slight supracondylar containment within the socket. But this is as all pin lock liners and is not a specific problem with this type of liner. When we look at the feedback from the patients, they say that the liner um, reduces sweat and that they see an improvement in socket comfort. Moving on to the fitting recommendations. The Silk Air Breed Locking Liner is a standard locking liner perforated above the unidirectional fabric and distally. Vacuum is maintained between the perforated areas using the distal one-way valve. Okay. This is a plastic cap that fits over the distal end, allows air and moisture to be expelled from the liner during stance phase but closes and creates a vacuum during swing phase to hold the limb position. I'm going to show you how you assemble the valve. Put the valve on distally. You'll find a small washer in the pack. Place that over it. A 
apply Loctite as you normally would to the pin and then screw the pin in position. Torque or tighten the pin as normal. Next, move on to donning the liner. Similar as any pin lock liner, turn the liner inside out. Make sure that the pin is following the line of the anatomy and then roll it in place. Casting. Inside the, the pack, you will find a casting dummy. Fit the casting dummy um, to your liner. Trim the dummy to the size at the end of your cap. The dummy that is supplied is a uniform dummy that does all liners. However, you will have to trim it depending on the size of the liner you're using. Refit the dummy, okay, using the example we showed before of fitting the distal cap with a pin or use a lanyard, depending on what you prefer to use for casting. The casting dummy has to be used to make sure the distal end is the correct shape. You can see here, collecting the casting dummy, holding it in place initially, and you can see the casting dummy is not the right size. So we then mark the casting dummy and trim it to the size for that patient. As I say, every liner will come with one casting dummy with it. Casting dummy back in position, exactly as you did before when you were Checking with a pin. At this point, either use a lanyard or a pin, depending on which system you prefer to use for casting. When we start to cast, cling film is normal. Mark your landmarks as before, so such the tela, any bony problems, kind of tibia, fibula head, any sensitive areas that the patient has. Take your circumferential measurements. It's most important we correct, collect the shape distally. So what we normally do is add a slab on the end, shape it to the distal end as closely as possible, and then leave it to dry before we do anything else. Okay, so shape that end in so that you have the shape of the valve and the casting dummy included inside your cast and then just continue to cast as before. I must stress the importance of maintaining the end shape of the cast. Don't create a space or void distally, as this will reduce the effectiveness of the distal valve. For your reductions, a reduce approximately three to 5%, okay? And then reduce to zero, 1% distally to give an effective total contact socket fit.
tick off your cast. Make sure you can see it. Make sure you've maintained that shape distally, which is most important from the casting dummy. Draw on your landmarks again. Check and record your measurements. Apply your reductions, say three to five percent approximately. Make sure you maintain that shape in the distal end. Do not reduce the distal end. Do not add material in the distal end. It's important to keep this. Apply any plaster relief you need to do. Again, make sure you're not adding or taking material off from this length. And that's cast complete. Next stage is actually checking the seal. Next stage is checking that the valve is okay. So at this point, we remove the casting dummy and then apply the definitive valve. You want to make sure that there's small space there and you will see that the correct valve is a slightly different profile from the real socket. Okay, ensure that there's some space for this valve to open and close during stand space. Again, as before, wash with simple soap and water. Fill and squeeze the water through the perforations, and this includes the valve. When squeezing the water through the distal end, I normally recommend that the patient pull the valve away from the liner and then apply a pressure downwards so that the water comes down out the, the perforations along the length and out through the distal end. Rinse well, pad dry with paper towel, etc. You can clean with alcohol spray or something similar, but this is not required every day. So fill in the liner with water, soap and water, and then just squeeze down. So you can see here the patient's pulling the valve down away from distal end and then pushing down so that water also is flushed down through the perforations in distal end. The reason we apply this pressure on the water down is so that any dried skin that has been caught inside the valves is flushed down through the system. This is probably one of the most common um, issues that I've ever had with the liner is if someone doesn't clean it properly, then these small perforations can become blocked. Clean the liner and then leave it to dry. Troubleshooting. Um, if someone comes to you and says that moisture collects within the liner, most commonly, and this is because the perforations have become clogged. So clean it, okay? Not cleaning properly will block the perforations with dense skin, etc. Okay. So this is always my first go-to if someone comes back and says that they started to notice that sweat is beginning to pull in the bottom of the liner again. Next, the valve does not operate. Um, this can be because there's insufficient space distally within the socket for the valve to open. Um, is there too much distal contact? To try this, there's a spacer included in the pack. Put this on and check and see if this helps. Okay. The other one is to check that the casting dummy was used. I've had one instance recently where they'd even sent this out at delivery. So they'd sent it out with the casting dummy and then were worried why they were not getting the full effect. So make sure you're using the correct valve, which is the shape distal cap at delivery. 
the casting dummy is only used for casting and make sure you cast with us. Finally, we found in some cases where the pin lock body is stopping the valve from opening. Usually this is because the spacer has not been added, so check that the spacer is there between the pin and the valve itself. So in summary, we have a perforated silicon liner that transmits air and moisture for cooler, drier skin and a more secure fit. It has been shown to maintain vacuum distally, increasing the stability between the liner and the residual and providing a method of suspension. I now move on to the clinical evidence supporting the use of these liners in our clinics and prosthetic practice. 24 patients across six UK centres were provided with Silcare Breathe liners and asked for their feedback. Um, the feedback was recorded at fitting one month, three months, and six months later. The patients used a variety of different liners. All patients had issues with sweat type fitting. 33% um, still had some issue after three months. Okay. However, after six months, uh, only two still had um, experience of problems, um, and these were during exercise. When asked how effective the liner was in maintaining dry skin, we saw that we got an above average over the group of responses. When the patients were asked, does the vacuum hold um, the process, it was found to be consistent over 76% of them. Many process did not realize that there was a vacuum element to the suspension and that this was created between the perforated area on walls and the distal vacuum. But routinely, most of the patients were happy. The seal's effectiveness being was found to be greater than the previous year's system in maintaining sufficient vacuum for this group of patients. Um, and all the process noted this. None of the sponsors ever found the additional seal from the distal one we valve to be uncomfortable or for the vacuum that was generated. When asked for the patient's feedback and sweating, the patient's self-perception is similar to the observation of their prostas, that they will still sweat initially, and then this will drastically reduce over the course of a three-month period. More importantly, however, prosthetic disuse due to sweating was eliminated completely after three to four months, um, and this was recorded by the amputees. So there was no point they had to stop wearing the prosthetics. When looking at the utility rating by the amputees, what we could see was that there was an improvement in ease of putting on the liner, how well it conformed to the residuum, and the comfort of the liner, and all these scored above average and greater than they had with their existing or previous liners. When rating the walking and the comfort of the liner, the maintenance of the vacuum and their prosthetic control, again, all rated this above average and also again greater than their previous sockets. When compared to their previous liner, all noticed less sweat and that their limbs felt cooler. Summary of the trials, both the prosthesis and the patients noticed reduction in sweat problems. The vacuum design worked well without affecting comfort, and many people didn't understand how the vacuum was there or realized the benefits it gave them initially. Most importantly, prosthetic abandonment due to sweat was eliminated after three months. 
looking at a couple of case studies, the first one is an active K3 male, aged 41 years, 90 kilograms. This patient enjoyed rectal exercise, but this could lead to blistering over the scarring. The patient had booked surgery to revise the scarring, hoping that this would reduce the blistering formation. In June 2017, the patient was fitted with perforated liner. After a month, there was considerably less sweat, um, even after jogging. After four months, the blistering had healed. The patient had actually felt confident enough to cancel the surgery, and now is regularly involved in five-mile jogs. Case two is an active K3 to K4 male, 45 years of age of 100 kilograms. This patient uh, actively competes in motocross events, um, however, has experienced residual limb and skin issues since 2014. In August of 2017, and also developed in the posterior aspect of the residuum, uh, this persisted for over a year, and dermatological clinic advised prosthetic issues for three to five months to allow healing. One year later, the patient was fitted with a perforated pinlock liner. After a month, there was a visible reduction in size and it was no longer superating. And by two months, there was a further reduction in size, tissue granulation, and the patient was then fitted with a perforated liner with suction suspension. After two months, the patient was fitted with a cushion perforated liner with suction suspension. As expected, with passive vacuum, and the perforated liner, we saw wound healing. And by six weeks, this was concerned almost completely healed. Further information showing the evidence for this type of these type of liners and their use in our clinical practice can be found on our website. We have recently published a paper um, describing how the use of silk air breathe liner technology was used in order to resolve fitting issues related to poor suspension and moisture accumulation. This white paper can be found at Blatchford's uh, professional section. Okay, and the paper is titled A Study of Residual Limb Health. So, in summary for today, Silk air breathe leads to a cooler, drier skin. Sweat is driven away from the skin. This maintains suspension and control for the amputee, minimizing pistoning and chafing. All of this adds to improvement in patient comfort and satisfaction. The liner is intended for transtibial amputees of good cognitive ability, and it is most important that the patient is aware of the good hygiene that is required and the cleaning required for this type of liner. These liners are suitable for K1 to 4 patients um, and the K3, K4 for locking and are aimed at patients concerned with perspiration and potential skin damage. I would like to refer you to our website for further information about these. You also find the clinical compendium where we have summaries of scientific a uh, proven support for our products and we have the range of white papers where we've summarized scientific information to make it a more palatable and shorter information package for us. I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, my name is John Ross. Um, feel free to contact me. Please don't forget to complete the feedback and the follow-up email. Register for your next webinar at blatchwood.co.uk backslash webinars. And also on the web, you'll find more resources for professionals, blatchwood.co.uk backslash prosthetics backslash professionals. Thank you for your time today. Please feel free to connect with us 
and as I say, complete the feedback that will be sent to you if you should require a certificate for your continued professional education and also give us hints of what you would like to see in the future. Thank you.